Hey Han, I'm Chloe and this is the knot or seated knot tutorial. My mission here is to share my passion for pole dancing and make pole dancing easy to learn and accessible. This is the 44th video of the beginner pole trick tutorial series. In order to maximize your training out of all the videos, I highly recommend you to start from the very first video of this playlist as the tricks will be a progression of the video before. The knot or the seated knot is a very simple yet effective trick. This video is mirrored for your ease of learning. I'll also have a red wristband on my right wrist and my right ankle to indicate the right side of my body if you do get confused of the direction. This trick tutorial is created for you for information and educational purposes only and for you to enjoy learning pole dancing from the comfort of your own home. Please participate at your own risk and don't work beyond your capability and seek help or spotting when necessary. For any health concerns, please make sure you seek professional medical advice. Please also you make sure you warm up your body before you start this video. I'll also have a warm-up playlist depending on your level under the playlist warm-up so that you can try it before you do the tricks. If you enjoy this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up so that I know to create more of these kinds of videos and consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet so that you are notified every single time I upload a video. If you are looking to further your pole journey and combining tricks and dance together, then consider learning on my online learning platform, Pole Art Bowl, where we put tricks and dance together into a combo and learning an entire routine with combos and dance together. You can find the link in the description below for further information. Alrighty, without further ado, let's get into the knot or seated knot tutorial. Alrighty, let's get into our conditioning. For our conditioning today, we are going to do our sits. Now, with our sits, we are going to make sure that we come into our baseball grip. So, we're gonna start on our toes on the left side of the pole. Now making sure that your inside hand is on top, so your right hand is on top and then left hand on the bottom, right in front of your chest. Now make sure that your hands do not move. Keep it in front of your chest until you can squeeze your armpit and think about pulling your elbow down to the floor and then pulling the pole down with your hands. Now from here, tummy comes onto the pole and then you're gonna get your inside leg on top of your outside leg into your sit and then you're gonna come down and controlling it down. Now again, I want you to really make sure that you keep your hands in front of your chest all the way down here because this is gonna help you in the long run to build the strength that you need to start doing your inverts, which is gonna be quite soon if you haven't tried them yet. So let's start conditioning now. So again, hands in front of your chest, squeezing the pole down with both of your hands. Try keeping the, maintaining the same height, tummy on the pole, and then into your sit. Beautiful, one last one. Again, try to really maintain that same height as much as you can, pulling the pole down. Beautiful, coming out. Well done. Let's try it on the other side. So all you need to do is swap your hand, keeping your bum tilted. All right, coming onto your toes, inside and on top, making sure that your hands are in front of your chest and into your sit. Good, you got two more. Last one. Beautiful, well done. There is a conditioning, done. Alrighty, let's get into our knot or seated knot tutorial. Now for this one, you can either put this paw on spin or static, they both work. I just have this on static today so that you can have a look at what's my hand doing and my leg positioning and whatnot. However, I do prefer this trick on spin. Again, I'm just doing this on static so that you can have a look at where my hands and my leg positioning is. So this is what a knot or seated knot looks like. Thank you. 
Alrighty, so let's break down the knot or the seated knot. So we're gonna start in our sit or you can do an aerial sit as well. Now, if you haven't done a sit or an aerial pole sit before, make sure that you watch that tutorial before you attempt this trick. This is a definite prerequisite to be able to do your seated knot. So, we're gonna come into our sit. Now, once you come into your sit, making sure that your inside leg comes high, a little higher than your hip height. Now, from there, you're gonna get your outside hand right underneath your knee, and then you're gonna grab the back of your knee with your hand. From there, you're going to fold your outside leg in and then you're just gonna lean forward and then you're gonna grab your opposite foot, leaning forward. And there is your seated knot or your knot. To come out, you're gonna grab the pole back and stepping out. Well done. Let's try it on the other side. So you're gonna come into your sit. From there, inside leg comes up, grabbing your leg. You're gonna start folding your bottom leg or your outside knee. And then you're just gonna grab your foot and leaning forward. To come out, grab the pole back and stepping out. Well done. So there is your knot or sitting knot on both sides. Alrighty, let's go through some tips and common mistakes. Now the first one, I should say more of a tip, is your leg positioning in the trick. Now with your trick, once you come into your seated knot, there's various ways or various angles of how you can do your seated knot and this is really going to be optional and also sort of like what you prefer. So once you come into your seated knot, you can either bring your outside leg a little higher and then your inside leg lower and then come into a knot so that your inside knee and your outside knee is quite close to each other. I think this one looks pretty as well. Or you can also bring your inside leg up so that your toe is aligned to your knee. This is also one way of doing it. Again, this is really preference. So see what sort of shape you like and then adjust it accordingly to what you like. Now, other thing I also wanna talk about is making sure that you duck your head down. So rather than keeping your head neutral, that you think about almost kneeing your face with your inside knee. So once you come in position, it, either you bring your toe down or up, either or, they both work, but making sure that you duck your head all the way down and that's gonna help you come into your full seated knot and also for the trick to look effective and nice. Now, other thing I also wanna talk about is making sure that you have ample grip on your legs because this is all leg grip and also a teeny bit of shelf grip as well. So, if you have any material interfering with your legs or your shelf, I highly recommend you to make sure that you expose that part of your skin. So tuck your pants up, make sure that you have your shelf exposed and that's gonna help you a lot with getting the ample grip. So for those that don't know what a shelf is, it's your squishiest part just right here in your waist, right in between your hip bone and your rib. Now, other thing is making sure that you lean forward. Now when you're leaning forward, if you feel like your inside arm is getting in the way, most likely, because you're not leaning away and then forward into the pole, you're probably leaning straight into the pole. So what I mean is, if I were to face it this way, when you're coming into your sit, you wanna make sure that you slide your hands uh, and then when you're grabbing your leg or your inner part of your knee, that you lean away and forward 
into the pole and then get your inside arm around to grab your outside foot. Again, if you don't lean away and forward into the pole and then to, for you to get your shelf grip, you won't be able to get your inside arm around and then you're probably gonna end up getting your arm stuck. So just make sure that you lean away and forward and that way you'll get all the grip that you need in your shelf and then get into the right positioning as well. Now, other thing I just wanna talk about is our hand positioning in our seated knot. So when we're coming into our sit, make sure that you grab not your leg behind this way, but you're getting your inside arm around so that the back of your shoulder is on the pole and then reaching down. That's gonna be a total different trick if you try grabbing it from the other side. I mean, again, pole is very subjective, so it's not a wrong position. Probably named a different trick. I don't even know if that exists or not. Or maybe we made it up today. Have we? This way? Maybe we made a new trick today. <laughs> But yeah, this is gonna be a total different trick. So just making sure that you thread your inside arm around, lean away, get it into your shelf, and then grab your foot. And that's gonna help you get into the right position. Now, let's also talk about a thigh grip and also your shelf grip. If, worst case, still don't have the grip that you need, making sure that you grip up your body and your hands because that's gonna help you go a long way with this trick. So. Make sure that if you have sweaty skin, apply something that's drying on your body. If you have um, dry skin, then get something that's a bit more moist or give, give it a bit of moisture on your body. So all the products that I use, so I have dry skin and oily or sweaty hands. Uh, if that applies to you, then the products I use are in the link in the description. I'm not sponsored for any other products, but this is just for your own benefit. Now, if you are the other way around, so if you have uh, sort of like oily skin, then you probably want to apply something a bit more drying. Give it a bit of research and that's going to help you go a long way in terms of the grip that you need for this trick. Now, those are tips and common mistakes I wanted to go through. Now, before I let you go, a little mindset tip for you today. Now, I am very much aware that some of the pole tricks, they hurt. And especially if you sit on the pole for a long time, it freaking hurts. And pain is obviously a big part of pole dancing. And I know that some of the pain is so unbearable that you just sort of like feel deterred from doing some of the tricks. Now, having said that, the pain is always just worse in the very beginning when you're doing something, but it always gets better the more you do it. Now, say for example, today, when I was sitting on the pole just then, it freaking hurt because it is quite hot in Australia, or I should say Sydney today. And the more it's hot, you either, if it's too hot, you might slip down. But if it's a good amount of hot, then you have a lot of grip. And ooh, I like felt it a lot today. And it's very normal. And I pull every day too, by the way. And if that hurts for me, I can't even imagine for someone that's like trying it today, how their skin would feel. So just remember that, yes, pole does hurt, but the way I frame pain is that the more it hurts, the better it is, because that means that you have more grip in your legs, and that means you're not gonna slide down the pole. So just keep that in mind. I know it is almost a sadistic way of thinking, but one could say is a positive way of saying, seeing that as well. So keep that in mind while you train. Pain means it's a good thing. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me in the knot or seated knot tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I shall see you in the very next tutorial. Bye. Uh. Hello, what are you doing there? Hmm? What jump?